Welcome to the first day of CES, and I can't thank you enough for thinking that this is the most important conversation that's going to happen at CES, because I'm a firm believer that, that it is. Um, we know that we're entering a decade where the only constant is amazingly quick change. We know that hundreds, literally hundreds of thousands of people will be in Las Vegas this week to see technology of all forms evolve. But sometimes I think they lose sight of how technology has to, the underpinnings and the infrastructure that we have has to evolve. So we started Living in Digital Times, our company that is a partner with CES, 12 years ago to explore in more depth what these technological advances mean. And there is nowhere better to have the discussion about money and uh, commerce and transactions than here when we're on the brink of new products. And so I am surrounded by, uh, I always say that talking about money is, is sort of like talking about sex, but now we're allowed to talk about sex at CES. You'll see we have a whole vibrator section for the first time. <laughs> so now we can talk about money also and say, what's wrong with the current system? <laughs> nice geeks do not talk about sex or money, right? <laughs> so, um, and so, um, and anyhow, the other thought that comes to my mind is um, something Ralph Waldo Emerson said, and he said, money costs too much. And if you think about the fees that we pay and the speed of the transactions and the delay in transactions and the legacy systems we have, it's time to look at the foundations of money. But I am no expert, um, so I invited two amazing experts who are going to serve as your guides during the day. On my left is Andrew Morris. Andrew was at Money 2020, for, and he'll tell you about it for a number of years, and he'll be guiding the fintech part of our discussions in the future of banking. And Michael Casey, how many of you have been here for other years? Um, Michael is now editorial director at Coindesk, Wall Street Journal. He'll, go, he'll tell you all of the wonderful things that he's done to ensure that the next system that we create together will be um, fundamentally decentralized. So with that, I'm going to introduce you to Andrew, who's going to say a few words about fintech, Michael, who's going to say a few words about crypto, and kind of lay out the day for you. Robin, thank you. Thank you. It's great to be here. So good morning to everyone. Thanks for coming to Digital Money Forum, and Happy New Year. It is 2020, which means that I have been in this space we call fintech for 20 years or so, and it's been sort of an amazing ride over that period of time when you think about the amount of change in this space of payments and commerce and banking. About six years ago, I took a role as the chief content officer of this new conference called Money 2020. Uh, shortly after that time, a digital money forum uh, came into being. And Robin and I have had this sort of front row seat as things have uh, uh, changed. And the, the excitement of the industry has been palpable. And it's been this whole group of stakeholders that included the incumbent old school with a whole group of new startups and emerging players, and all of them coming together to create the future of money. And the success stories are too many to, to mention, but one, one that stands out is that there was a, there's a company uh, that in 2010, uh, two brothers, Patrick and John Collison, uh, two Irishmen, and they're still in their 20s, started a company called Stripe. And their simple thesis was there needs to be an easier way to, to make payments on the internet. And that idea turned into, by 2016, a $9 billion company, and now a $35 billion company. And we saw this type of thing happen. So if you think on a global basis, investment in fintech in 2018, two years ago, top to 100 billion. That is, that's doubling what it was in 2017. Um, globally, this is continuing to happen. This one company, Jack Ma's Ant Financial, uh, has a $15 billion fund for investing in FinTech. Uh, there are 20 plus unicorns, more than 20 uh, billion dollar startups in the FinTech space. Two of them you'll hear from today, N26 and Revolut. And that is more unicorns than any other vertical, which is uh, 
interesting testament to what's happening. So and it's never been more appropriate to be having this conversation at CES, yeah. right? Well, and because also because of all of the combination, the, the well, the Googles, Google, the Ubers, right. the Apples, they're all they're all banks now. I mean, by the right. end of today, Michael Casey might be your bank. <laughs> no, please. So, so, so tell us where you think things are going. All right. Um, so, so, well, first of all, I mean, thanks for having me again. This is my fourth uh, Digital Money Forum in the, out of the last five. So it's always been a great pleasure. Thank you very much, Robin, for, for this and welcome, everybody. Um, you know, look, looking actually over those four or five years, I think, yeah, is it to that question, where are things going? The forum itself has been something of a, of a bellwether. I myself have, have worn and had all this change in my own life. I was at the Wall Street Journal, went off to MIT for a while as the digital currency initiative over there and then shifted, start, formed a startup, and now here I am back in journalism. I'm the chief content officer of Coindesk, and I have to actually point out that a number of my colleagues are here today, so you might see them floating yeah. around, cameras in hand, there's Ali over there. Um, so lots of change everywhere. Uh, the one constant, for me at least, is the Digital Money Forum, and yet the forum itself, it seems to capture this ebb and flow and change that is constantly part of certainly the industry that I'm interested in. 2018, how, who can forget that? January 2018, uh, the peak of the crypto boom, right. at least we called it a boom at that point. Um, we had standing room only, people hooting highest, and cheering. Highest valuation. <laughs> the <ever>. rainmakers <laughs> on stage were the heroes, right? The guys that, that sort of had uh, yeah. formed these exchanges. A year later, uh, prices weren't looking so great. There was a slight, <laughs> significantly gloomier mood. But the reality is here we are a year later, and there's an, an entirely set of different issues and questions to be discussed. And we'll be getting into some of those. That's what's exciting about this space. It's like it really is f forging all this tremendous change. In fact, you know, people will tell you crypto is dead. Uh, it is absolutely and completely far from it. And this forum here is a way to tell you that. Um, and, and I can say that I think if you look at things like China is now you know, mm -hmm. releasing a, a digital currency. Um, people look at that and say, oh, okay, so how's that radical? What's different about it? It's, it's obviously nothing like the utopian decentralized idea of Bitcoin, but it is dramatically different. It, will, it is nothing like, with all due respect to the fintech guys who are coming up with new interesting right. ways to use financial services. <clears throat> when you change the foundational layer of money itself, whether it's a central bank or a decentralized model, it has profound impacts on how things are going to change. So this is the most important disruption of modern times. The disruption of money is the disruption of how we store and exchange value. It's the foundation of society, right? So that's why this is a big story. And that's why, you know, I'm excited about this. And the reality is I think that, you know, as central banks start to introduce these new currencies and explore them, and velocity of money starts to speed up and there's more easing in and out of other digital forms of value, then the alternatives that the decentralized crypto world start to offer emerge, right? This is in fact something that will create a greater competition for currencies around the world and that's a really exciting phenomenon. Uh, but the other thing is in this past year, um, you know, we've, we've actually had a third alternative emerge, um, which is going to be a bit of a segue here, I think. But, I think so. Uh, I and we call that I smell it. corporate <laughs> money, right? So you've got centralized, decentralized, and our companies themselves. And the most exciting, most dramatic, most fought over version of that, of course, is Facebook's Libra. Well, actually, I'm going to have to absolutely correct the, re the record in, in that. I'm sure that Dante, who's coming out in a moment, will correct me on that. It is not Facebook's Libra. That is the point. Right. But Facebook is the, the genesis behind this, right? So Libra uh, is uh, a dramatic new approach. 21 different companies that are forming this association, a basket of currencies. Um, and I think, you know, getting into what that means and how uh, it really does offer yet another alternative to how we move money around the world is the, probably the best way to start up the I think show. So. So Everybody's heard of Libra, right? Um, yes. And so we're um, super fortunate today that um, we're being joined by Dante Disparte. Dante Disparte, who is the uh, head of, of public affairs uh, and communications at Libra and is also the vice chair of the Libra Association. Um, so Dante, why don't you come out to the stage? Yeah. And we're